but it just keeps going straight until you pull backwards. <laughs> Today we're going to look at another somewhat uncommon feature that most power wheelchairs have. After screwing around with that Invicare chair that had the ASL head array set up on it and using the cruise control mode that it had, I realized, huh, latch driving is actually kind of interesting. And pretty much all permobile chairs and really pretty much any wheelchair has the latch driving or the cruise control baked into it. So today we're going to try out a few different chairs and see how the cruise control works on them. We're gonna start off with this C300 that I'm sitting in here. There are a few steps required to enable it and unfortunately you do have to have access to an OEM programmer or a dongle and I'll put some links down below to a blog that has information about how to do that. There is a bit of a barrier entry however because those Arnet USB dongles are pretty expensive but if you have an Invicare chair with the MK6i electronics and the SD card slot on the top, you can actually enable it using that. And that basically is essentially free if you can find an old SD card, but we'll go into that a little bit later. For right now on this chair, I've got the latch driving already set up on it. And just to demonstrate real quick here inside, profile three I've enabled, and you can see we have this little stair step icon here, whereas the other profiles do not have that. So once we go into here, you can turn and back up just like normal. But as soon as we start going forward, you'll see the speed starts ramping up. And when you let go, the chair keeps moving. Now you can still steer like normal, but the chair keeps going forward. So if we push forward again, it'll speed up to the next notch. And you can see we're moving and I'm not pushing forward. So you can turn and everything else. If you want to stop, all you have to do is pull backwards on the joystick and the thing stops. Now the way Permobile has this set up from the factory, oops, let me turn it back into normal mode before I forget. The way Permobile has these things set up from the factory, they want you to have an external switch attached that's used as an emergency stop. And not just any external switch, it has to be a normally closed switch. And when you go into that mode, you have to push that button so the system knows that it's connected for like safety and whatever. Uh, typically those are going to be set up with like a chin switch or if you have one of those remote head switches or even on this chair This thing was originally set up if you see the velcro on both sides here uh, It had some little micro switches that were attached right here But in their documentation there is also a setting you can change to override all of that and you don't need an external switch at all I'll show you how to do that later as well I haven't used the C300 outside the house yet with cruise control mode So we're gonna go over to a parking lot and play around with this a little bit and then I've got another MK6i chair out in the garage that has the SD card slot on it. So we're going to come back and I'll show you how to turn that on and uh, we'll check that chair out as well. Also, I believe a third chair we're going to try. I've got the Quantum 6000Z. So we're going to try that out as well. I've got one of the Curtis 1313 programmers in here and I haven't tried the latch driving on a Quantum yet. I know how it works on Invicare and Permobile so it'll be interesting to check that out. But yeah, let's uh, head over to a parking lot and uh, check this thing out. Okay, so I just realized something. Um, the C300 does not have ESP or gyro stabilization at all. And I've also put the faster motors in it, which makes it a little bit more dangerous, a little bit faster, and probably not well suited to cruise control or latch driving. So we're also going to turn it on on the F3 because it has the ESP stabilization. And when we try to go up and down little hills like this, the chair should be tracking perfectly straight the entire time. So I guess we can show the differences between that. So let me go down here and uh, let's see how this works outdoors. Okay, so we'll go up into our profile that has um, cruise control enabled and we're going to push forward, get up to a moderate speed and then see how it works. Okay, there we go. Now. As you can see, the chair's moving. I'm not touching anything. It's veering to the right, so I'm gonna turn the left. But that's because this pavement is not the most even thing in the world. Now I'm going to avoid this hill here. So we're gonna turn over this way a little bit. Okay, we're going down the hill, so I have to correct on that. But yeah, 
We're going straight and I'm not touching the joystick. So we can turn now. And again, because this is a C300, it doesn't exactly track straight. I'm having to continually make adjustments to keep the thing going straight because uneven surfaces with these chairs tend to make them turn a little bit. See, I'm going towards the curb now. So in this particular chair, whoa, really going left there. In this particular chair without the ESP, the angle of the pavement is almost going to negate the benefit of it because you still have to keep adjusting your turning to keep it going straight. So C500, probably not the best thing in the world to use for this. And now we're going towards the curb again. And we want to stop, just pull back. Um, yes, does work on the C300. Not very recommended because it still takes a lot of user input to keep the chair going straight. So I think what I'm gonna do now, actually, oh, why did it stop? It's flashing. Now there are timeouts that you can program too. I think this one might default to 10 seconds. Let's see if I can get going straight long enough without touching it to see. But yeah, I think next we're gonna get the F3 out here and uh, we're gonna turn on the cruise control on that. And yeah, okay. So it's set up with a timeout currently and it will only go for a maximum of 10 seconds without any input. So steering left and right resets that timer. A little bit windy. So steering left and right resets that 10 second timer, but you can also change that in your settings as well. So I guess that's good as far as safety goes. If you don't touch it at all for 10 seconds, it'll stop. If for some reason you get out of control and can't touch the uh, joystick or whatnot. So yeah, attempt number one, I don't recommend it on a C300, even with the five mile an hour motors, because these chairs are just not safe to begin with. Okay, um, let's go back and get the F3 set up. Okay, so here we have an F3. This one's from 2016. This is the uh, slightly newer version, but uh, I believe it's 2019 when they changed to the all new plastics. But we've got our Arnett dongle plugged in here and we're gonna change a few settings on this. Profile three, I was doing some testing on before. So we're gonna change this one to cruise. Then we're gonna scroll down. Oh wait, almost forgot. Uh, the key setting you have to change if you want to override using the external switch is this one here that says emergency stop switch. You have to set that to no. And then that will bypass the settings that force you to plug in a normally closed switch. So let's go down here to where latch driving is. Here we go. It says latch drive, set to off. So we're gonna pull up the menu and we're gonna set this to cruise. There we go. And latch timeout's 10 seconds. Let me, uh, I'm gonna change that to 30 seconds just for no reason. Okay, looks like 30 seconds is an allowable uh, thing. Actually, let's see how far we can go. Let's try like a thousand seconds. Let's see if it'll allow that. Okay, so it looks like the maximum you can do is 250 seconds. That's what I was curious to find out. So let's set that back to 30 seconds just for no reason. So yeah, that's basically it. You just enable a profile and set your latch driving to cruise. I'm not gonna do a full um, tutorial on how to do this right now. Like I said before, there's a blog linked down below and I'll try and make sure there's an article in there that goes over how to do all this. But uh, that's, that's a completely different topic for another video. Let's go ahead and verify now that it took the program. If the emergency stop switch is not disabled, it won't let you drive the chair at all in any profile. And when you come up on a non-latch profile, if you try to move the chair, it won't move. And it'll come up with this big thing that says E-stop on the screen. So the fact that the chair moves right now means we got it set up correctly. So here's cruise control, and we've got our little steps on here. And looks like we're good. So yeah, let's get this dongle and computer unhooked. I'm gonna swap over my cushions and the side guards, and we'll go do some more testing with a chair that has ESP gyro stabilization. 
Now, this chair is the proper candidate for cruise control driving because it'll keep you going straight. Okay, we're back out here again. Um, we've got the F3 this time. So we'll go ahead and leave our speed set to a medium level here. And then we'll go into our cruise control mode and we've got the same stepped thing. So now when we hit all this uneven terrain, the chair should keep going straight. Okay, that's going almost full speed. But as you notice, we're going completely straight. You can still steer just like normal. We're gonna go down this little bit of a hill right here and see what it does. Okay, so it turned a little bit to the left. I had to correct there. But overall, it seems to be going a lot more straight and staying on track with the gyro stabilization. So we're gonna try and, we're gonna try and cruise up this hill here. Uh, it is still veering to the left. Huh. See, we were aiming that way before, and now we're turning. I would have thought that the gyro would keep it going straighter. Let's go a little faster. Okay, so we're at full speed now. Let's see what happens when we hit this little bump here. Okay, it's going pretty straight. We're veering this direction just a little bit. But it's way better than the C300 was. See how this curb is just uh, staying right there? I don't know if I want to turn at full speed. Carefuling. Okay, it slowed down when I turned. Okay, this is maximum speed of the chair now. How weird is this, right? Okay, it just beeped at me for some reason. I'm not sure what that was all about. Let's turn here a little bit. I think if I go into full turn, it should slow down. Oh, okay, not so much. Now I have played around with the gyroscope settings on this chair. So um, your chair will probably be different and a little bit safer. But how weird is this? I'm like, I'm cruising around in a wheelchair and I'm, I'm not touching the joystick except to steer occasionally. <laughs> this is just, this is such a strange concept, right? Very small movements. Oh, that was our 30 second timeout. So it seems like the faster you go, the straighter it is. <laughs> okay, let's try going up this hill here. I'm not gonna lie, this is sketchy. After, tip, after tipping over that C300 the other day, I'm definitely a little more apprehensive with stuff like this. All right, well, it seemed to work. So consensus is the F3 with steering stabilization is much better. I mean, you do have to still steer a little bit, but it I think it's still easier overall than holding forward and steering the entire time. Um, yeah, interesting. All right, let's move on to the next chair. <laughs> All right, here we have the Jazzy 600 ES. So this one is running the MK6i Electronics. It originally came with a different control system, but as you can see, the motors on here are much larger than the stock ones, and it is pretty jumpy. So let's pull this thing out of here. This is an MK6i Pro card that I made up, 256 megabyte one. You gotta use older cards for these. I made a video a few years ago talking about MK6i programming, and I said that I can mail out people's cards and whatnot. I'm actually not mailing these out anymore, but what I'm doing instead is I'm just emailing the software to people. So you have to find your own SD card. It has to be four gigs or smaller for 100% compatibility. You can't use a micro SD card with an adapter. You can't use like a 32 or 64 gig one. It has to be one of these older ones. There are some higher capacity, like maybe six or 16 gigs that might work, 
but I know for sure four gigs and smaller will work all the way down to about 256 or 128 megabytes. The memory controllers on the newer ones are different and the chair won't recognize it. So we're gonna go ahead and stick it in the SD card slot here. Make sure the chair's off. Now we're gonna power it up and store the program that's on the chair right now to the SD card. Then we'll go into the computer and uh, make some changes. So what we wanna do, uh, hit menu and then store to SD card. Push to the right push to the right again and make note of that name it says Invicare it might say TDX uh, any number of other things but it's going to refer to the model of the chair typically so it says it's stored okay we'll turn this off take out the card and we'll go into the computer now and make the changes I'm going to open up the SD card here and mk6ivs.exe hit okay file open then you want to navigate to that disk, or to the SD card, go into system, user, and then the name of that file will be here. In this case, it's invicare.sys, and we'll open that. It takes a minute to read. Then we're gonna go into the performance adjustment tab. I'm gonna use the drive four profile as our cruise control. So I'll change the name of that. We're gonna keep all the settings Pretty much the same. And then we're gonna scroll down. Actually, I'm gonna set the trimmer dampening to 15% as well. And then we're gonna scroll down here to where it says uh, momentary slash latch. And we're gonna set latch. And then from the menu, we're gonna set cruise. And that's pretty much all you need to change. Uh, standby is turned off. Whoops. You have to be careful with this program. If you try to scroll up and down, and you do it over one of these windows, it'll actually change the option. So you have to be careful for that. Okay, and then that's it. So we'll go file, save, and then close the program, eject the SD card, and we'll copy it back to the chair. Now the process is pretty much the same. Put the SD card in, turn it on, and this time we're going to read from SD card. There we go. Turn it off, take out the card, close the little butt flap, and let's see if our profile's on here now. Uh-oh. Okay, um, so we're gonna need to change another setting. Apparently it's looking for an external switch. Okay, well, slight problem. It appears as though Invicare does not have the bypass option for not having an external switch when you're using latch driving. So, I've got one of these little mini mono switches here. It's just like a mono jack, basically. We're gonna try plugging it into the ports on the joystick and see if that will make it happy. Now, this one still has the labels on it, so you can see we've got remote power and mono port. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this switch into the mono port jack. Then we'll turn it back on and see if that registers as a reset. Okay, there we go. So this is a normally open switch, which means right now the switch is not connected. When you push it, it closes. Basically it's resting state is open until you push it. So it doesn't make contact until you actually hit the switch. Whereas Permobile wants just the opposite of this for their switches. As it turns out, the batteries in this thing are not very good. I went ahead and just hot glued this little switch on right here. That way it's always in reach when your hand's on the joystick. I think for now, we've got the wiring on here. This thing is glued on. Use the Patreon funded glue gun for that. And uh, yeah, once it's done charging, we'll head back out to the parking lot and smash into things and give it a test. Okay, so it turns out the Invicare system is actually pretty different from Rnet as far as requiring an external switch and not being able to bypass it. To get this chair moving, you have to turn it on and then you have to have a normally open switch attached to the mono port here. So when you first turn it on, it says press reset and you have to push that button, otherwise the chair will not move at all. When we go into latch driving mode, it says here at the bottom, latch driving ready. It's sort of similar in the sense that you control your speed, you hold until you get to the speed you want, but pulling backwards slows you down. 
So you push forward to get the speed you want, let go, then you just steer. And if you want to slow down, you pull backwards to get to the speed you want and let go and it continues at that speed. The only way you can stop the chair is by pushing this button. So theirs is a little different. Allow me to show you. So we're gonna push forward here and we've got our latched driving enabled so we can steer. If we wanna go faster, you push forward and it goes faster. Now if we wanna slow down, you pull backwards and it starts slowing down. Then when you let go, it stays at the same speed. You can still turn and everything, but pulling backwards doesn't stop the chair, it just adjusts the speed. If you wanna stop, you gotta push the button. So a little bit of a different setup on this one. Um, I assume that because the way the head array was working, oop, or slow down. <laughs> I assume that because the way the head array worked, it um, pulling backwards wouldn't do anything because the head array doesn't have a reverse. Anyways, that's confusing. But yeah, it works essentially the same, except that you have to push a button to get it to stop. So here we go. We're cruising along. We can adjust our speed a little bit. And then we can steer like normal. If you want to slow down, you pull backwards. Then you can steer. And it just holds whatever speed you set it at until you hit the button, then it'll stop. So it is interesting to note that between the manufacturers, the way these things are implemented is actually pretty different. Um, still kind of neat though, being able to have the cruise control set up so you can have your other hand free. But uh, yeah, I don't know. This one, I think your muscle memory is gonna be a little bit different because simply pulling backwards doesn't do anything. And obviously most people are not gonna have, you know, different brands of chairs. So once you get used to the way yours is set, I mean, no big deal. But um, yeah, kind of interesting, I think. I'm not gonna run around here too much because these batteries are not very good and I don't wanna get stuck out here. <laughs> um, I probably should've brought the manual chair with me for backup, but um, yeah, interesting. And again, there's no ESP or steering stabilization on this thing, so you pretty much have to keep your hand on the joystick no matter what to keep it going straight. Especially when you're uh, on uneven terrain like this. And of course the tracking's a little bit off so that, oh, oh, oh. okay, there we go. So that was me just barely smashing the curb. I'd gotten used to the muscle memory of pulling backwards to stop and it takes a while to reprogram the um, the panic routine, as it were. Like, you know, when people get on mopeds and motorcycles and they freak out and don't know what to do, they end up twisting the throttle to full. So that's the trick. You have to be able to program that memory and stick with it. You can't keep switching between chairs. Um, oh, we've got the little charge batteries indicator there. So we're gonna call that good. I'm gonna put this down into a normal drive profile. And then uh, we're gonna head back to the van. Yeah, so <laughs> that's funny. That was a total panic stop and I didn't know what to do. I, I tried to pull backwards, I tried to steer, it wasn't responding. <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, I have to hit the button. By that time, uh, this caster wheel had started scraping on the curb a little bit. <laughs> I don't know where the camera was pointing when that happened, but I'll have to review the footage. So we're gonna head back and play around with the Quantum 6000Z. I have not played with latch driving at all on a Quantum, so I have no idea how it works. We're gonna do this at the same time, and I'm gonna be learning at the same time as you guys are. I'm assuming it's possible. I've got the programmer and everything, and pretty much all the chair manufacturers have this function, but I don't know if it requires the head array or extra switches or what exactly. I do have another one of these mini switches uh, in case we need it. So we can put that on that chair. I'm gonna leave this one attached on here for now just cause it's got latch driving enabled and without changing the programming and turning that off, you have to have this on here to use the chair at all. Even if you're not in a latched profile, like I'm in a normal profile now, the chair won't move no matter what, unless you have a switch connected and you push that button. Now you can drive it around normally. Okay, next up we have the Quantum 6000Z, which is Legitimately a dangerous chair just because of how fast it goes and how powerful it is with normal settings Now I'm a little bit nervous about latch driving with this. I've done 
enough falling out of wheelchairs recently and I'd prefer not to do it again. So we're going to program another profile on this one with latch driving enabled, but I'm only going to set the speed to like 50% because yeah, I don't need any more repeats of that stuff. Now this chair runs QLogic 1. They have a number of different firmware versions of it, but they all pretty much operate and program the same. These chairs are among the most difficult to program because they have so many different parameters and changing each one affects all the other parameters as well. So it's sort of like, um, I don't know, what's that game with all the letters and the cubes and you shake it up and try to spell words? Well, every time you change a setting, it shakes up all the other letters. So this is a Curtis 1313-3309. This is compatible with QLogic 1, anything that was ever made with QLogic 1. Uh, it'll also program some of the NE Plus or the older, um, like, single line LCD, or, yeah, LCD display chairs. It will work on some QLogic 2, but not QLogic 3. QLogic 3 is a completely different setup. This is a serial-based chair, and the newer ones are CAN bus-based. I'm going to make a video discussing what those are later. But this has a 5-pin connector on it. It's based on an uh, XLR, but I forget exactly what this connector is called. So we will plug this in here. And I have not played with this at all, so I have no idea where these settings are. It takes a minute or two to pull everything off the chair. Actually, you know what? I'm going to look through this real quick and figure out what the heck I'm doing. Then I'll show you guys once I'm done. I, I don't want to put out too much information and confuse everyone because I'm getting confused myself at this point. Okay, now this chair only has four profiles in it. The fifth one is used for the seating controls. So we're going to go down here to the bottom and we have an option for latch forward and latch reverse. There's off, cruise, three step, and one step. So we're going to set it to cruise mode. We're going to leave latch driving for reverse turned off. Um, I turned up the latch timer to 10 seconds. It was set to 5 by default, but let's put it to the 10 uh, because that's how Permobile was. And then I'm going to adjust our speed settings a little bit here. Profile 1 is ridiculously slow. So we're going to set forward speed to 60%. And we're going to basically mimic the settings of profile 3 because I know that's a pretty manageable one. Okay, I think I've got everything adjusted here so it should be safe. So let's go ahead and power this thing down. We'll reboot the chair and see what happens. Okay, let's go to profile one. Okay, we've got a big logo here that says latch. So I'm gonna get ready to hit the power off button, but I'm gonna try and move forward and see what we get. Okay, so it's moving on its own. Okay, pulling backwards stops. Cool. Reverse, doesn't latch. Turning doesn't latch. Looks like only forward, and then you pull back to stop it. Okay, cool. So this is just like Permobile or Arnet. And uh, it doesn't require any jacks or switches or anything to be plugged in. Um, sweet. Okay, last test of the day. We're gonna have to go to a different parking lot though because when I went through last time, someone was setting up a campsite. So there's a bunch of other places we can go. But I'm going to find a cushion for this thing. I'm going to hop into it, and uh, we're going to go see if we can make some safety not happen. <laughs> I'm going to bring the programmer with me, though, just in case I want to make some little changes along the way. As far as speed adjustments on the Quantum, they are live, so you can adjust it on the fly. So I can be moving and change the parameters with the handheld programmer, which is kind of cool. This should be interesting. Okay, we found another random parking lot. Here's I can tell the quantum system has the fewest number of safety features available. You just set it to latched and go. There's no extra settings or anything else you have to screw with. So let's go into profile one here. Here we go. We got our little latched icon. Make sure our speed's up all the way and uh, let's see what it does. All right, so we're moving like normal. We'll go a little bit faster here. And again, you um, you pull backwards to stop, and it stops really fast. I am sort of noticing a trend with all these chairs. Um, with the exception of the F3, it was a little bit better, but it takes a lot of input to keep going straight. Now this chair goes straight on its own, 
but for some reason when we're in latch driving mode, it's veering to the right. Well, actually now we're on a cross slope, so it's going straight. But it still takes a fairly significant amount of input from the person operating it to, um, to keep it going straight, which I find interesting. Oh no, that's, okay, check this out. When I go to turn full, the chair comes almost to a stop, and then it rotates, and then it accelerates back up to speed. Interesting. It's just kind of cool to check out these different systems and see how they all work. I don't know if it's necessarily something that most people would want to use. I think it's designed more for adaptive controls. Let's go faster. I think it's designed more for adaptive controls and things than it is for someone who's using a joystick. Oh wow, this thing is really pulling to the right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just something I'd never really played around with and now I have. And I can see why a lot of people don't really use it. It's um, fairly questionable. It's fairly questionable on most chairs as to its safety. <laughs> Pull back. Oh, well that does a full e-stop. <laughs> Okay, well, anyways, I think that's all we need to know. Let's uh, turn around and head back to the van. There's no way I would ever go this speed, though, with latch driving enabled. So, as far as safety goes, Quantum appears to be, I don't know, I wouldn't say the least safe, but they have the fewest interlocks and settings you have to change. You just turn it on and it goes. Permobile, the way I had it set up, it's got an additional timeout. So I, I program the thing so that if you stop moving for five seconds, I believe it was, the chair will go into a standby mode and it won't respond to the joystick until you push the profile button. So that gives you an extra mental check basically so that you know you're in latch driving. This one, you can easily leave it on that profile and forget that you're in latch driving and start moving, forget about it, and then go to let go and the thing keeps moving. So, at least with the Permobile, there's an additional check in your mind before you start moving in the latch driving profile that you're doing something that's not normal. Because again, like I was talking about muscle memory, it's kind of a really big deal when it comes to wheelchairs. So, I don't know. Kind of cool, I guess.